Assalamu alaikum students. So this is the second uh, lecture related to the cardiac output series. And in this, we'll be discussing uh, basically two uh, learning objectives. One is the, the, the linked concept uh, between these three uh, concepts, which is uh, mean systemic filling pressure, uh, which usually is equal to mean circulatory filling pressure. So we will just uh, uh, use one of these terms. Uh, then we'll look at venous return uh, once more and uh, central venous pressure once more because these two terms, or actually all these three terms have been defined. Uh, the venous return and CVP more in detail earlier in the circulation unit. And this was described yesterday. Uh, after giving a recap of these three, uh, we'll be discussing their interplay as well, how they are linked together in the whole circulatory unit uh, and so on. And in the second part of this lecture, we'll be discussing cardiac and vascular function curves. Remember, I told you in the last uh, in the first lecture of the cardiac output that in during that lecture, we treated heart and circulation as separate entities, sort of independently. Uh, but in here, in this one, uh, we will <clears throat> be discussing the actual real scenario where both heart and uh, the vasculature uh, works in tandem. Uh, and through these functional curves, we'll understand how that is uh, uh, achieved. So the three linked concept, concepts overview of MSFP uh, is basically uh, where it's, uh, it's when it's the filling pressure, uh, which we have described already. Um, it, can be, uh, uh, it can be measured if the heart is uh, made to stop uh, and uh, the, it, that is the pressure uh, throughout the circulation. Uh, without the heart beating, as I've mentioned earlier. Uh, so basically in cardiac failure, uh, this would come into play. Uh, also by clamping on the big vessels at the root of the heart, where you literally dis disconnect temporarily, of course, the heart from the circulation, uh, you also then uh, induce MSFP in the circulation, okay? So uh, this basically is more uh, to do with, uh, I just described you the practical implications, but this is more to do with the, uh, to understand the physiology of circulation. So it's more of a concept than an actual routine procedure uh, or, or a routine parameter uh, in the clinic, on the clinical side. It's more of a physiological parameter to understand what goes on in circulation. So MSFP and MCFP is basically systemic and pulmonary circulations, they are uh, so but the pulmonary uh, you, we can ignore because of the very low resistance and very low um, volume of blood that enters as compared to systemic. So basically, whenever we are talking about the filling pressure, we basically mean the systemic filling pressure. Uh, you will see this uh, in your textbook. Uh, mostly, uh, they talk about MSFP, okay, because they're usually equal. So that's that, uh, factors affecting it, obviously uh, MSFP, it's a filling pressure. So if you have more blood volume, uh, it would raise the MSFP. If you constrict the, if you constrict the vessels, i.e. by sympathetic stimulation, it would increase the filling pressure. This is uh, an obvious thing. Uh, and this is, the, this is the physiological golden rule, basically. The filling pressure is directly proportional to venous return. So the more the filling pressure, uh, either by raising the blood volume or by a sympathetic constriction of the vessels. Uh, basically, you are increasing MSFP, which is like a sister to venous return. It is like saying the same thing, but it's good to parse these two concepts. Uh, it is the MSFP which is raised when we say that venous return has raised by either of these two parameters. Okay, right. So central venous pressure, as you know, is the right atrial pressure. It's the key determinant of the filling of the right heart. Uh, also, it has direct uh, proportion with the cardiac output, according to uh, Frank Starling's law. So the more the CVP, the more uh, in a normal heart, of course, uh, the more would be cardiac output. Okay, that's one aspect. However, uh, the more the CVP, the lesser would be venous return. Okay, because what you are doing is venous, you're receiving the venous you're receiving the venous return in the right atrium, okay? And the welcoming pressure should be as low as possible. So it's kept around zero. So zero to three or four MMAG is the normal 
right atrial pressure. Uh, if you increase that more than the normal uh, range, uh, then you are basically uh, retarding or pushing venous return uh, backwards, right? So this is an important consideration, right atrial pressure, i.e. the central venous pressure's relationship with venous return and central venous pressure's relationship with the cardiac output. This will come into play as you move along this lecture. Uh, then venous return, just uh, 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 we, we have been discussing venous return a lot. We have been discussing the factors that affect venous return, all that skeletal muscle, thoraco, uh, abdominal pump, and all that, that anti-gravity stuff that venous return has to deal with. Uh, this is basically a formula which puts in everything uh, in it. So MSFP is there. We've just discussed that VR is directly proportional to MSFP. Right atrial pressure is there. We've just talked about how right atrial pressure, uh, uh, basically the CVP, uh, its relationship with venous return and the resistance to venous return is basically the peripheral resistance. How, uh, if you increase uh, TPR, how would it affect the venous return and so on. So when you put all these values in, uh, there's no wonder that you get five liters because venous return, if venous return is five liters, then cardiac output would be five liters. So saying it in layman terms, the amount of blood that comes into the heart, the same is pushed by the heart to the arterial side. So if it's five liters, it needs to be five liters for the cardiac output to be five liters. Okay. Right. So we have discussed the overview of these three linked concepts. Now just link, let's link them and let's see how they play. Okay. So this is a very famous uh, graph in Guyton and it's uh, usually reserved for the the better students in Vivers. Uh, and the key question, the trick question is, uh, how is uh, 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 this, this whole graph basically, uh, which starts from a point called the MSFP here, uh, it goes up and then it flattens basically. Why does it flatten? This is the question, okay? So keep, keep, keep in mind this question and let's solve this graph. So first, as I usually say, look at the axes. The y-axis has venous return. The x-axis has right atrial pressure. Okay, so this is point zero, right? Uh, if you increase the right atrial pressure, you're obviously asking for trouble because you are not being you're not being very welcoming to the venous return. You're increasing the pressure in the receiving chamber of the heart, and hence this this thing goes down. Okay. Right, and above this, so there's a slope here. Above this, you are increasing venous return. Okay, this is one way if you want to solve it from the zero. The classical way to solve it, solve it is you start with this point here. So if you observe that it can be off throwing uh, uh, on the first instance, but it, it really makes a lot of sense. MSFP being zero at a high right atrial pressure or around this point, okay? While the venous return has hit zero. So basically, uh, this is where the pressures of uh, uh, the uh, filling pressure, i.e. seven, you, if you remember, MSFP normal, normally is seven, right? So mean, the filling pressure of the circulation, which is seven, actually has equilibrated with the right atrial pressure being seven as well it is approximately seven, right atrial pressure is seven at this. So CVP, right atrial pressure is also called CVP. So CVP equals the MSFP. If you have the filling pressure equaling uh, the CVP, would there be any flow? Of course not. There will be nothing, No, nothing will happen. The, you need a delta P, you need a pressure difference between the right atrium and the venous return. Ven the venous side of blood needs to be at a higher pressure then the right atrial pressure, okay, which needs to be low on the lower side so that the blood can enter into the right atrium. But at this point, let's say it's the starting point of this graph, the mean systemic filling pressure being seven meets right atrial pressure, the CVP, again, seven. So the venous return will hit zero. Now, what you do, okay, what you do is basically <clears throat> you track this graph from this point upwards which basically means you are decreasing right atrial pressure. Yes, you are decreasing from this very high point where everything has sort of 
uh, 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 come to a halt, you now decrease the CVP. And as you decrease, you see that the Venus return starts to improve. It goes up, obviously, because you are welcoming it. You're welcoming the blood in the right atrium. You increase it, you increase it, you bring it to zero. It really optimizes. It really is very happy here between zero to plus four. This is where the normal heart uh, uh, puts it, uh, adjusts its contraction accordingly. We'll be coming back to this point that I just mentioned. It adjusts the cardiac output in such a manner that the right atrial pressure lies between zero to plus four. Okay. Okay. So we go even further up. We go from zero to sub zero. Now we are in minus territory, minus one, minus two, minus three, and then minus four. So this transition zone from zero to minus four is where the graph sort of uh, becomes funny and it tends to flatten. Okay. One may wonder, we are still doing the good thing. We are decreasing the right atrial pressure. That is the CVP. We are decreasing it. Why is it flattening? Okay. And then beyond minus four, it just flattens. It flatlines. No, no, nothing, nothing is happening. No increase in venous return. It has just died. Okay. What has happened? Basically what has happened is below zero. What happens if you, if you drop a pressure, any pressure below zero, it becomes a suction pressure. Okay. It becomes a negative pressure. Suction pressure is negative pressure, right? So instead of pushing it, you, the right atrial pressure uh, has dropped it, dropped so much that it will have a suction pressure on the veins on inferior and superior vena cava, cavi, okay? And it will collapse them. So once again, the suction pressure, the minus negative pressures of right atrial, right atrium will, will, uh, it will create a vacuum like uh, situation where the veins, which are flimsy anyway, which are thin walled, they will be sucked, collapsed in this scenario. And hence there will not be any more increment in venous return. It will just flatten. This is the answer to the trick question. The transitional zone and the plateau is because of the collapse of the great vessels because of negative CVP. Okay. So we've done, we've done this. We've done this graph. Please do uh, revise this from your book as well. Um, this graph is important. I selected this because of the varying MS uh, the filling pressures uh, in this graph and uh, uh, plotting it against venous return, seeing what happens to the venous return. So <clears throat> this is normal. Uh, filling pressure is seven. Then there is an abnormal situation going on here where we have increased it. I'll tell you how we have increased it. The, the filling pressure is 14. And here the filling pressure ha has been dropped from seven to very low. 3.5. Just have a, having a cursory look, uh, uh, ignore the dotted line here. Uh, look at this, uh, the green, red, and the blue lines. Okay. So you'll observe that the whole stuff, the whole curve basically displaces upwards and to the right when you increase the systemic filling pressure, the systemic filling pressure. It's like you have increased blood volume. This is one of the one of the uh, uh, interpretations of this. If you increase blood volume, remember all of this, all of this is on a fixed blood volume. There is no change in blood volume. Okay, this is how a closed circuit cardiovascular system behaves when you change the right atrial pressure, okay, uh, on top of a fixed volume, the mean arterial pressure uh, and venous return improves on that. Okay, so this here we we assume that the blood volume is constant. However, in this graph, and this is why this graph is very interesting, is that it actually tells you how volume uh, changes MSFP and increases venous return. So all of those concepts in the mind basically have a mathematical value now. That if you increase uh, the filling pressure from seven to fourteen by introducing more blood, so a blood transfusion has been given to this person, or or, or some sort of fluids have been given to this person. The vasculature carries more volume now uh, to the extent that it has doubled its filling pressure. Now, when you start to do the same maneuver, you, you, you decrease the right atrial pressure on this filled up vasculature, the venous return will really be enhanced. Okay. So we can sort of say uh, that the greater the difference, this is a good line here, the greater the difference between PSF and right atrial pressure, greater becomes the venous return okay so introducing this volume gets us 
the situation. And uh, basically, when you remove volume, when you remove volume, uh, you also uh, do the same, uh, but in the negative, in the opposite direction. The curve now has dropped to uh, its uh, lower situation or downwards or leftwards. Okay, and this is just vice versa. The uh, the filling pressure from seven it has dropped to three point five, and now everything will be reduced. Uh, the the filling pressure has obviously been reduced. The curve, the curves uh, 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 situation has reduced, and the Venus return very importantly has reduced. Okay, so this is this graph basically uh, tells you how uh, Venus return, right atrial pressure, and uh, filling pressure behave when you change blood volume okay you can also argue and later on we'll discuss this as well so let me just explain it here so you can just copy paste this discussion over there you can also have this effect by sympathetic stimulation think about it what does sympathetic stimulation do to the veins it causes the uh, availability of the unstressed volume so that re that reservoir function that i keep uh, talking about uh, that unstressed volume that is stored in the vein now it's available in the venous return so again it has the same the same thing you have in, increased uh, the venous return and so on and so forth okay 